Charles Kettering, my interest is in the future because I am going to spend the rest of my life there. I am going to spend the rest of my life there. Andrew Carnegie, do your duty and a little more and the future will take care of itself. And the future will take care of itself. Magandang araw dyan sa inyo mga kapatid. Salamat sa Diyos at binigyan naman tayo ng isang araw sa mundo para makapagsilbi sa Kanya. Bueno, ang ating tema sa araw na ito ay Digging Deeper into the Future. Digging Deeper into the Future. 1 Corinthians 15.51 says, Behold, I am telling you a mystery. We will not all sleep or die. But we will all be changed. We will all be changed. Verse 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will raise imperishable, and we will be changed. Take note. It says, we will be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. It did not say that the rapture happens in the twinkling of an eye. The whole section of the scripture reading from 1 Corinthians 15, verse 48 up to verse 53 are all about how we shall become like the Lord. These verses explain how that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God nor does corruption inherit incorruption. The bodies of the saints must be made fit for heaven. Now the term in the twinkling of an eye is used to describe the speed of the changing of the bodies and the remains from corruptible to incorruptible and not about the speed of the rapture at all. Not about the speed of the rapture at all. The twinkling of an eye is the time it takes from light to enter the eye, reach the back of the eye, and be reflected back out. Now, light travels at 186,000 miles per second. 186,000 miles per second. So, the twinkling of an eye is about 1 billion of a second. The twinkling of an eye is about 1 billion of a second. Be that it may, the Apostle Paul used this term to assure us of our supernatural miracle transformation from immortal to immortal, from corrupt being to an incorruptible entity. There is no need for any human effort. It assures us that no one can impede it, slow it down, or add anything to it. Therefore, brethren, we need to comprehend that true regenerated believers in Christ are just passing through this polluted, decaying, chaotic, and dying world. We are on our way to our permanent home, awaiting us temporarily in paradise, and then back on earth, reigning with Christ for a thousand years, and finally settled in our eternal dwelling place in the new earth and the new heaven. Salamat sa Diyos. Apostle Peter tells us that the new heaven and the new earth will be where righteousness dwells. Second Peter 3 verse 13 says, But we are looking forward to the new heavens and the new earth. He has promised a world filled with God's righteousness. A major feature of the new earth will be the New Jerusalem. John calls it the holy city coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. Revelation 21 verse 2. This glorious city with streets of gold and pearly gates is situated in a glorious new earth. The tree of life will be there. Revelation 22 2. The city represents the final dwelling state of all redeemed believers forever in fellowship with God.
God's dwelling place is now among the redeemed saints, and He will dwell with them forever and ever. Salamat sa Diyos. They will be His people, and God Himself will be with them and be their God. His servants will serve Him. They will see His face. Revelation 21, verse 3. Seven things that are no more in the new heaven and the new earth. No more sea. Revelation 21, 1. No more death. Revelation 21, verse 4. No more mourning. Revelation 21, verse 4. No more weeping. Revelation 21, verse 4. No more pain. Revelation 21, verse 4. No more curse. Revelation 22, verse 3. And no more night. Revelation 22, verse 5. All genuine regenerated believers in Christ indeed constitute a heavenly people with a heavenly calling even while still on earth. In the book of Hebrews chapter 3 verse 1 it says, Therefore, holy brothers and sisters, partakers of a heavenly calling, consider the apostle and the high priest of our confession, Jesus. The creation of the new heavens and the new earth brings the promise that God will wipe every tear from their eyes. Revelation 21 verse 4. Therefore, we must trust God and His good purposes on earth that are happening in our life and obey Him in everything that we think, say, and do until we see Him in heaven and hear Him say, Welcome home, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your salvation. Hence, let us then focus on our future and God's great plan. For life is a journey. For life is a journey. Decide now, brethren, intentionally and deliberately with a persevering spirit in Christ, focusing on our future and not on your past. Trust God in regards to your eternal life, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Trusting that God is all-knowing, all-powerful, and ever-present. Salamat sa Diyos. God knows and holds the future. God is totally in control of the universe and all created being. Make no mistake about it. Make no mistake about it. He has plans for your life, which is a million times better than any plan you may have. Which is a million times better than any plan you may have. Hebrews 11.40 says, For God has something better in mind for us, something better in mind for us, so that they would not reach perfection without us. Salamat sa Diyos. His plan is perfect. His timing is perfect. His motive and heart of love is for your good. His heart of love is for your good. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. It's your call, mga kapatid. Which path will you take? The here and now temporal makamundo earthbound life or in the new heavens and the new earth, your eternal life. It's your call, mga kapatid. There is never a time in the future in which we will work out our salvation. The challenge is in the moment. The time is always now. The time is always now. Mga kapatid, bago tayo maghiwalay -hiwalay, magkaroon tayo ng prangkahan, ano ang mas importante? Ang buhay natin ngayon sa mundo? Ilang taong ka mabuhay dito sa mundo? 100 years? Hindi naman siro makaabot. Pero doon sa eternity, ilang taon ka doon mabubuhay? Walang limitasyon mga kapatid. Millions and millions of years. So ano ang mas importante? natin? Ngayon, dito sa mundo, Mag-happy-happy ka, maglulungkas sa mga bisyo, maglulungkas sa mga material, 
mga makasarili, maka mundo at mga mga ka, kasama na mga gawa or magsakripisyo ka magpakamatay ka sa sarili mo kargahin mo ang iyong krus araw-araw at sundin mo si Kristo sundin mo kahit masakit sundin mo dahil ang iyong eternal life millions millions you will spend millions and millions pansinin mo ha pagbalik natin dito sa mundo kung ikaw ay tunay na nang nag naging kampante sa pagsunod sa lahat ng utusan ng Panginoon Diyos marapture ka maalis ka dito sa mundo papunta ka doon sa paradiso ngayon pagdating ng panahon balik ka dito sa mundo kasama si Kristo you will reign with Christ Jesus warm up pa lang mga kapatid 1000 years after that 1000 years Forever and ever na. Kayo ang mag mga kapatid. Gamitin niyo ang inyong utok, kung sintido kumun, ano ang mas iparte? Ngayon, ilang taon ka dito sa mundo, happy-happy ka, maglulong ka sa bisyo, or bahala na magsakripisyo ka ngayon, magpakamatay ka sa sarili mo, kargahin mo ang cross na inigay ng Kristus Yesus, sundin mo lahat ang kanyang mga commandments at pagdating ng panahon doon sa eternity, you will spend millions and millions with the Lord Jesus Christ forever and ever. It's your call, mga kapatid. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Salamat sa Diyos.